my name is Francis Pinder and you are watching or listening perhaps to the Salesforce Posse podcast where I speak to Salesforce industry influencers so we can gain a better understanding of how to excel in a career path from a Salesforce admin or developer to an architect. But in this conversation, things are a little different. I'm going to be talking with Tom Bassett and Sam Wadwani. And that is because all of three of us came up with that crazy idea that there needed to be yet another Salesforce community group. And so we are starting up the Salesforce London Architect Community Group. Tom is a solution architect at Trig Digital, but over the years has worked for a number of Salesforce consultancies, including Cloud Orca and 4C. And Sam has been a chief technical architect at PwC for a number of years. But this podcast is all about why we set up the Salesforce community group, as well as a bit of an introduction about us. But if you do want to come along to the next London Salesforce Architect community groups, or you want to find more about your local community groups near you, then head to trailblazercommunitygroups.com and hunt us out. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, so here we are on the podcast and I'm here with Sam and Tom, who are my fellow co-organizers of the London Architect Community Group uh, that we're kicking off next month, this month, depending on when you're listening to it. <laughs> who knows? Next month, um, yeah. But I think our first, what was our first one? The 17th, no, 19th no, November, isn't it? 9th of November. Yeah, oh, right. All cool, good. Okay, cool. Uh, so we thought we'd have a quick podcast to kind of introduce ourselves to those people that are interested in watching. And hopefully we'll be streaming it and recording it anyway, um, or the forthcoming or later sessions anyway. So you can be able to watch them online, fingers crossed. I think we talked about that, haven't we, at some point. Um, so why don't we start off with a bit of an introduction? So who wants to go first? Do you want to go Silence. first, Tom? <laughs> I'll go first. I'll go first. Yeah, sure. Um, okay. Uh, right. um, yeah, so uh, my name's Sam Wadwani. Um, uh, some some people may have seen me in the ecosystem um, already because I've uh, been there for about 13 years now. Um, seems like a very long time. Um, and yeah, I've been um, operating as an architect um, for a consultancy firm since graduation, but for about 10 to 11 years in the Salesforce ecosystem. Um, and um, sorry, uh, for 13 years, but um, 10 to 11 of those have, have been actually from a, uh, a uh, Siebel architect background. Um, so yeah, oh, um, that's me. Um, Tom? Yeah, sure. So I'm Tom, if you haven't worked that bit out already. <laughs> and I started uh, my Salesforce journey as a humble admin um, back in 2018. Oh, cool. And that was for a charity uh, called Samaritans. Uh, ah, good so charity, that, was, yeah. that was based in the UK. Yeah. And so since then, I've kind of grown or, or spread my wings from my humble roots up through uh, the consultant ranks to the lead consultant to senior consultant, and now I am a solution architect. Mostly what I do is B2B um, rather than B2C. So I'm definitely a lover of uh, Pardo, or should I say marketing cloud out engagement. Uh, <laughs> Always Pardo to me. Uh, yeah, exactly. It will change Pardot tomorrow. To, so. to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <There's Alan. Yeah. laughs> Cool. Um, okay, so <laughs> should we get into the whole world of Pardot and renaming and rebranding the Salesforce ecosystem? <laughs> Maybe not. That's, that's probably another whole new rant of a podcast, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. So um, why did you want to become a leader of the London community group, architect group, either of you? Yeah, so I'll I'll start on this one. So I do a lot of extracurricular activities 
in Salesforce, and that's that's kind of how I put it. So I spend a lot of my time helping people on the answers community uh, as an answers leader. I write articles for Salesforce Ben. I've uh, recently been and spoken at Dreamforce. So ultimately, as a person, it might sound corny and cheesy, but it's the honest truth. I just like helping people, kind of spreading the word, uh, sharing the love. And I think one of the things I'm most looking forward to as, as part of this is getting the message out there that you don't have to be a CTA to be an architect. Mm. You can be somebody like me who's a solution architect instead. And putting the kind of metaphor uh, into action, I, I think architects are a little bit like crisps uh, because there's many different flavors. And I'm definitely looking forward to spreading the the word about yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think even if, even... Yeah. It's like you're making, like I've said this on the podcast previously, but it's kind of like you're, everybody is making architectural decisions. If you're an admin, if you're a developer, you know, any decision you make, you know, you could be making something that's going to be hard or costly to change in the future, which is basically an architectural design decision. So I think the more you learn about it and the more you kind of come into the community, and this is one reason why I wanted to be part of the kind of architect group in london was yeah to kind of get that show that there's actually more to even just kind of like a technical architect you know there's this thing called a business architecture architect as well that isn't really technical at all and it's such a vital piece of the kind of enterprise architecture or architecture puzzle uh and then kind of, yeah getting that word out and, and showing but also sharing that kind of architectural knowledge and you know where i'm not a i wouldn't say i was a great business architect at all because that's not my focus but then having the opportunity for people that are to come and share their experiences of, of what it means to be a business architect yeah. or whatever type of architect in the many flavors of crisps that are out there yeah i totally agree how about I you think, um, sam um, yeah yeah so it's similar sort of um similar sort of rationale really um i definitely think that um in the past you know there's been almost a, a stigma attached to um what an architect is and what an architect does um, but i think in recent times you know mm -hmm. there's been a lot of effort and initiatives to sort of dispel those myths and actually explain you know what mm -hmm. tom said about the fact that there's actually multiple different types and you know it's it's actually more approachable as a career as a you know competency um, then you might think so it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be technical mm. it doesn't necessarily mean you have to, you know you, um, you you have to um, be you know a certain way or you know a certain stature um, you can you know it, it's more about mindset than anything else um, so I definitely think you know the, yeah. there's a purpose for sort of encouraging you know different kinds of architects in the ecosystem um, me personally I've you know I've uh, I've spent a lot of time um, in my certainly in my Salesforce career um, helping to share the knowledge and experience I've gained um, in amongst the teams that you know and the, and the practices that I've been part of um, and that became ever more present and necessary when I was sort of planning um, and going through my journey to become a CTA um, which I mm. have now achieved but now you know the 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 sort of role has switched and now i you know spend a lot of time actually trying to help other people much like much like tom said actually um and this is almost an extension of that not necessarily focused on cta by any stretch um but it's you know it, it's sort of in the same vein of um wanting to share knowledge i still believe that you know as a totality we're far more than the um, the sum of the parts, if you see what I mean. Um, so actually, mm, if we, yeah. you know, is that no, is that yeah, right? Something like that. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but the, yeah, you know, we've we're, all got we're better together um, than an individually. To share. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you know, sharing knowledge, um, encouraging the discussions, um, and actually get you know getting some value from it. Um, you know, to answer the mm. questions about well, so what. You know, there's lots of knowledge out there, but what what does it mean? Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely collaborating and learning from each other.
which yeah it's the whole point of the community mm. groups <laughs> yeah so um yep i just wanted to dive into a little bit of kind of my own experiences and i think yeah kind of give some examples of maybe things i can bring to the group and and it's a little bit as a person uh you both probably know this already but i speak usually what i think sometimes my my mouth uh engages before my brain does um but i i, I kind of think that i'm perhaps stronger in kind of maybe more of the business architecture than maybe you guys are and maybe that's something that i can bring to the group in terms of like i've gone through the traditional consultant track which is kind of leaning towards a business analyst anyway mm. I spend a fair amount of my time writing user stories, uh, making sure that the jobs to be done are defined um, mm. and they are kind of tight. And then I kind of jump towards like the build part of the project, put my kind of solution hat on and decide, okay, are we doing this in flow? Are we doing this in code? Um, what should we consider? How scalable should this be? Um, and the the kind of other side of it that I've been involved in a fair amount recently. And I think it's purely just because working for a Salesforce partner, you kind of get given whatever project lands in your lap. Um, Whether you like it or not. One is, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's a good thing. Sometimes you have to learn to swim quite quickly. Yeah. Uh, but this one is quite an interesting one because it's an experienced cloud one. It's enterprise level, and we are ultimately designing the UI and making sure that the users of the site have the best experience. Mm. So I've been uh, my kind of user of creative muscles then. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't think of myself as creative at all, but definitely somebody who 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 kind of cares more and kind of thinks about is this the best way to do this like where we have this upload component do we have it elsewhere is it the same mm. uh does it work in the same way like usually uh but isn't that being creative kind of towards you know I, I i kind of think it's you know being an architect is quite a creative thing you know yeah, in some ways because so. you are you're, yeah I, yeah, just maybe not necessarily like drawing it. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you mean creative yeah. in the way you display, do things. Um, you know, you've got this toolkit of, you know, toolbox of a zillion different things that all could be used mm. to do, you know, solve the same problem in some respects. But it's being creative and, mm. and selecting the right tool for the job, but also in a, you know, that scalable kind of future looking without knowing what the future is kind of point of view or lens so yeah yeah it's interesting because uh, saying about that future view that future point of lens i've actually been working on this project for long enough that the same concept uh so for example the same approach for permissions that was put in initially is now not working yeah so interesting we we are having to it's classic crystal yeah ball it's it kind of like the, yeah the kind of not knowing what the future is but having to future proof but really not knowing what the future is yes. but then still being able to and i think that's one of the challenges is with yeah, architecture because yeah. you know this thing is going to yeah. be hard to change in the future but making you've got to be a futurist almost to make sure you're you know putting it right in the first place so and that's a great idea for one of our, you know, exactly, one of our yeah. sessions as part of the group, right? Is you know, how, how do you crystal ball yeah, gaze? Yeah. How do you sort of plan for change? How do you design for change um, and adaptability? But oh, I didn't just quote a well-architected theme, did I? Um... <laughs> <laughs> or even well-architected? Everybody, go find the website right now. You know, it's. You know, whole, yeah. whole session on that. Architect.salesforce.com. Go see it. <laughs> yeah. Start there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I definitely think there's um, 
there's a lot of creativity in the architect role that's for sure um you know uh, and like you said francis um around you know what tools do we use what diagrams are most important to be able to present you know complex problems or complex solutions mm -hmm. to you know to to the powers that be and the uh, and those that you know those stakeholders who are who are interested um and it does it's never a one size fits all right yeah you know, and 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 that's the sort of thing that yeah absolutely you know, yeah it is always going to be a a challenge um because you can't you mm. know, apply like a standard approach um every you know client's different mm. every situation's different it's got different constraints and you know and um uh and pressures so um so yeah i i do think you have to be creative and you have to um apply quite a lot of lateral yeah. thinking in a lot of a lot of the cases i think it's also it's like the your in some ways you're kind of communicate you know being able to communicate complexity in a simple way is like an art form in itself you know um and and that yeah. to get the message the correct message across to the correct stakeholders at the right level of abstraction i think yeah it's, it's an incredibly creative thing and tough thing to do as well yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've had a similar kind of thing. And I think there's a bit of a crossover here between consultants as well, the the kind of art of it. And I've referred to it before as like the art of consulting is being able to not only kind of illustrate or get the customer on board, whatever it is that you're trying to explain, but also being able to make those other kind of smaller decisions or assumptions kind of on behalf of the customer. Um, like, for example, if you are talking to them about reporting, you should probably know enough to understand what the fields are. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's what I have referred to before as the art of consulting, but maybe it's the art of architecting as well. Now that's an official word. Um, Trademark it, quick. Yeah. What, what do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> And and that becomes a lot more difficult um, when the you know the, the Salesforce ecosystem is ever expanding. We're adding more technology, and there's more considerations to uh, both technical and, and non-functional as well um, to add into the mix. So I definitely mm. think this is you know these are areas that we would want to discuss with the you know the wider audience as part of the group, um, and you know and, and tackle that more you know more pointedly in one area for example the you know i'm sure there'll be lots of people in in the group who have got experience in that in those areas yeah completely yeah and i think yeah so yeah no definitely i think on that yeah on our first first event next month this month or four months ago or six months ago depending on when you listen to the podcast <laughs> yeah is is really kind of getting getting uh we got some posters and things up to kind of get ideas for what you want to see at the community group. Um, what do you want to learn? And also, what do you want to present? You know, there's things that you find that is, is useful that you think should be shared across the wider group uh, and get more visibility on within the ecosystem. But I think it's such a vast topic. Um, yeah, <laughs> we'll be uh, hopefully here for many years to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think just speaking about like the evidence ness of uh, Salesforce like just this week or in fact I think maybe yesterday uh, Automotive Cloud was born mm. and is is now a thing uh, and Genie has obviously recently come out and there are some other new features and clouds that are probably on the way too so it's just ever changing yeah. and I think part of the message that I've kind of accepted uh, I don't know if the perfectionist inside me totally agrees but you can't be an expert in everything. Nah, yeah, you yeah. have to lean on others agree. and kind of, yeah, because it's not possible to know every cloud. Um, <laughs> and that's why when I started this, I, I was kind of like, yeah, B2B, I, I'm comfortable in that. Um, not, not so much B2C because ultimately that's like where my experience lies. I don't know you both if yeah, you've got similar it's, it's, experiences i think it's the same yeah it's kind of i think a lot of people think you know oh, i've got to learn it all i'm a consultant i'm an admin <laughs> i'm an but there's no 
it's like you can't it's impossible it's impossible impossible possible to learn it yeah. all um and even i've probably forgotten more than i've learned you know but was they think forgotten more than you <laughs> actually know now or whatever over the years and yeah you have to you know the by becoming really good at a certain area of Salesforce is brilliant because then you know you get known for being really awesome at that kind of piece of the Salesforce puzzle, either industry or technology combined or whatever it may be. Um, and there's still going to be tens of thousands of companies around the world just wanting an expert architect in this problem domain i suppose uh so you'll still have yeah. you know rafts of uh, you know lots of work out there <laughs> even if you kind of specialize down and not general uh, and actually i think more people should become more you know niched down to what they're you know they're good at um, because you know, I think that's the fu that's the where you know where the future's going. You know, you're, you're not going to get hired for being a generalist. You're going to get hired for having that kind of mm. wide architectural knowledge, but having it quite deep in a certain industry or, or area of the platform, or both. Yeah. I expect yeah. you'll see, um, you know, those um, those sorts of you know characteristics in a lot of the audience that we have in our group as well. Um, you know, yeah. how, how are you going to you know uh, understand more about the breadth of the tech you know the the, um, the platform or the clouds is actually the quickest way you're going to do it is actually by hearing from other people right um, and actually asking yeah, them questions totally. and you know things like that it's, it you know it, it sort of you know perpetuates the justification for the group <laughs> Yeah, completely. And also just things like, you know, one of the things subjects I would love to have at the group is, um, you know, Tableau on premise and that whole area that I just know nothing about, <laughs> you know, completely, you know, um, which would be great as well, you know, just getting a kind of that high level architectural view of where the differences are and what, what is the use cases and reasons for kind of going on premise versus cloud, or if there isn't any, you know. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I could talk to you about uh, Tableau, but in a parlot context, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. probably not. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's just a small slice of the pie, you know? and maybe other new things similar, like with Slack. I don't know much about yeah. Slack either. Mm. Uh, not for, to say that um, it's just that that breadth of everything, you know. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Well, and um, I mean, there's, there's obviously knowledge. the technical side of it. Um, yeah, well, I was just about to say as well, the, um, you know, the, the, the CTA credential is all about being T-shaped and, um, and mm -hmm. covering the breadth and the depth, um, you know, but it, but it doesn't cover all the clouds. Even that doesn't cover all the clouds. So you, you still mm -hmm. got the same challenge, even if you're, you know, at that sort of pinnacle CTA level, <laughs> doesn't, you know, it doesn't change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. No, cool, brilliant. So, have you got guys got anything else to say on the podcast? Except for how do you sign up to the London Community Architect Group if you want to come along? Which I'll put a link in the show notes for that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, you can go onto the Salesforce um, events pages mm -hmm. and search for the London Group there, and you can see the events that we've got coming up. Um, sign up, register, RSVP, you know. Um, whichever, um, and you know, I'm, I'm sure I don't, you know, I, um, the sentiment is shared. But we're really excited for the first uh, first session. Um, looking forward yeah. to you know seeing <laughs> familiar faces and new faces in the group, and uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, and no, I'm really looking forward. Yeah, to it. I think that's. Yeah, just looking forward to meeting new people and sharing my experiences them sharing their experiences yeah. and ultimately learning from each other. There are, I don't know, 20, 30 different ways to achieve the same thing. So you, you, you could have a ferocious debate all day about which one is the right one <laughs> and which one is not. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that type of conversation. And if Thanks you haven't me. signed up for our first session yet, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely uh, can convince a couple of people with some uh, plushies that we're going to be giving out as a result. Oh, so give it away. if you need it anymore, <laughs> um, you know, well, that's, that's definitely something to kind of coach you yeah, into signing absolutely. up. You know? 
<laughs> awesome. Well, brilliant, guys. Um, uh, I will put links to, if you ever want to reach out to Tom, Sam, or me in the show notes as well. Um, otherwise, I think, unless Sam, you've got anything to say to finish up? No, I'm good. Oh, good. Well, that is it for the podcast. So thank you very much, Sam and Tom. Thanks very much, Francis. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks for watching or listening to the Salesforce Posse podcast. Now, please, 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 if you like or what you see or hear, then please rate this podcast in your podcast player, as it tells me that there are people out there that actually are listening to this and that it's useful to them. Also, it helps the podcast algorithms to kind of elevate the podcast in the different podcast directories, which will be really helpful for me as well. And finally, if you do have a question that you want to ask on the podcast, then head to salesforceposse.com slash message and maybe you'll appear in the next podcast. But apart from that, thanks for listening and until next time, ta-ta!